Hey, hey, welcome back. Today, I want to have a look at the No Code Conference website. Specifically, they have this cool little Easter egg where when you hover over these dots and I think they appear as boxes on the page, they just vanish and then new ones appear. It's this little glitch effect that they're calling it. Uh, pretty cool. Here is my version. Just hovering and they disappear and then they come back. And as you scroll, uh, it'll appear on the page within the viewport. So show you the major keys to success to make this animation happen. It's going to be mostly in JavaScript today. As a reminder, I will drop all the code for this in my ultimate resource library. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So if you want to just uh, copy paste your way to the key to success, then you can get it there. And there's a bunch of other really useful stuff in here that I've used in other tutorials and that I just use in all my Webflow builds. Uh, all right, here's a quick look at the project that I set up. The main thing to look at is I have this dot class. Uh, I put it in this wrapper of persist class with high just so it doesn't show up on the actual page. But this is so that if I clean up the styles that the dot class will persist. Main things to know, it's got a width and a height of 16 pixels. Position absolute, I set to the top left. We'll get to, we'll style this per dot as we go. I put a Z index of five so that it shows up on top of other things. Gives it that nice little glitchy uh, effect. And then I set the color to red here, but we'll set that later. And then transitions, I set a time of 500 milliseconds to the transform property. The other thing I've got going on in the home settings here, I'm loading a script from Code Sandbox that is located right here. And let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. All right, so I'm in Code Sandbox here. The first thing I'm going to do is define a bunch of constants that I want to use throughout the project. I've got just an array of strings. These are all hex values for colors. These are the different colors that are going to randomly be chosen for each dot or circle. And then I've got the size set to 16. This matches the size that I set in the Webflow project for the class of dot here, 16 pixels. And then animation transition time, which matches the transition time down here. Uh, keep going here. We're going to get a reference to the page by the class name page wrapper. It's class name with the dot here. Uh, this is where we're going to append the dot. So the dot is not going to be in this persist class. It's going to end up right here, and we'll, we'll be able to see it. This is a helper function that gives us a random integer between this min number and the max. The min is inclusive, which means um, it will include that number, and the max is exclusive, which means it will not. I just grabbed this from the JavaScript uh, math.random here, if I clear this. And we come down here, get a random number between two values. We want a random integer between two values. Normally, math.random gives a value between 0 and 1 with decimal points, but we want an integer. So I'll define that function. And if I call get random int of, let's say, between 1 and 5, first one gives us 4, then we get 1, 4, 3, 4. So we're noticing that we get anything between 1 and 5 without getting 5. So that works, and we're happy with that. Keep going here. I'm going to define a function called create dot. Right now, it's empty. But I'm going to define that function, and I'm going to call it twice on page load. So create dot will be called twice whenever we refresh the page. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to define some more variables that I want to use while I'm creating the dot. Is circle is just a 50-50% chance of whether or not it's a circle. So I'm calling get random int between 1 and 3. So I expect this to return 1 or 2. And then I'm saying, hey, if this equals 1, return true by setting this equal statement here. But if it equals 2, then it's going to return false. So just giving myself a chance to be a circle or not. Now I've got another variable called color index. This is, gets a random integer between 0 and the length of this array here to access the color that we want to use. I've got scroll top. This is um, getting the top of the position on scroll. I have a diagram for this. I have um, some other values I'm going to get to make sure that the dot is being displayed in the, the viewport that the viewer is on. Here's the, uh, the visualizer that I have for that. So scroll top, we can see that's anywhere here. That's just going to show the um, the top of the user's window. And then we have client height. That's the top from, from scroll top to here. And then I think I also had client width. That's the width of the page here. So we're trying to position this little glitch dot somewhere in the view area. Uh, let's see. It always helps to also put these in the console themselves. So if I say scroll top, right now 1925. 
2583 as I scroll down. And then if I come back to the top, scroll top gives me zero. Now let's say I want to get the client height. This one returns 1001, 1001, no matter where I am in scroll returns 1001. All right. We're going to do a little bit of math. So dot width as a percent, I want to set the X position as a percent because I want to be able to resize the window and still keep the dot on screen. The dot width stays the same, but I'm not going to adjust for height at all. I want the height to stay where it is on the page. So it does, you'll notice that's not as a percent. So I'm setting the width as a, as a percent of the page width, and I'm setting the height just as a distance from the top, really. So if I come now back to the code, I want to get the dot width as a percent. So I take the size, which is 16, divide that by the full width of the screen, and then multiply that by 100. And then for Y position, I want to get random int between scroll top and scroll top plus client height minus size. So for the Y position, we come back to the Excala draw. We want to say the minimum for our, ra our random integer is the scroll top value, which would put the Y position here. And the maximum would be scroll top plus the client height. So the maximum would set it there. And then we subtract the size of the element itself to put it there. So now we know that the height can be anywhere between these two values, which is great. Now let's get the calculate the y position. The y position will be a random integer between 0 and 100% minus the dot width as a percent. So we're just calculating the dot width as a percent of the width of the viewport. So we take size, which in this case would be 16. Client width, which would be, let's see what I have right now is client width 998, or 988, sorry. So if we said 16 divided by 988, gives us about 1.6% times 100, 1.6. OK. And now we're going to create the actual dot element. And it's just going to be a div. We want to add the class of dot to that div. And that is going to add all these styles that we already predefined. And then we're going to customize that to, to display it in the right place. So first, we're going to set the transform to scale of 0. This is going to make shrink the dot to be nothing. We're going to set the background color to one of random colors that we're going to pick from this array. We're going to set the left value to an x position with a percent. This is backtick syntax. Anything within the dollar sign curly braces here gets interpreted as a variable. So let's say the x position was 50%. Or this, this would return the number 50. So 50 will get returned, and then this, the percent sign will be added here. And we can see if we adjust the dot here, anywhere from 100%, you know, or whatever, 100 minus the, the dot width as a percent, we're affecting the width there. And then we're going to set the top uh, property to the Y position in pixels. And so that would be here, let's say 10 pixels. And that's how we're going to display the, the dot on page where we want it to display. Put this back to zero. OK. And now we have that 50-50% chance for this is circle variable to be true or not. If it is true, then we're just going to set the border radius to 100 VW to turn it into a circle. All right, and now we want to append the dot. So I'm going to save. And if I refresh here, We don't see anything because we set the scale to 0. Let's set the scale to 1. Refresh, and now we're getting dots. We have these two dots right here. Set that back to 0. Nothing happens because we don't have an event listener um, on what happens when we hover. So after I append the dot, if I set the transform to 1, then we're hoping we would see it. If I save. In refresh, we're getting we're getting the dots, but they're not animating in. To animate them in, we want to wrap this in a set timeout. This is just a, a function right here. And then we set the time, and we're just giving it zero because we want it to happen after all this other stuff is done due to the JavaScript event loop. So if I save that, and now I come back to the site and refresh, we see them animate in. I'll refresh again. It's pretty fast because it's 500 milliseconds, but yeah, we're getting that animation that we want. OK, now the next thing to do is just to add that mouse over effect so that they go away when we hover and create new dots. So I'm going to 
at an event listener, it takes a parameter for the event name, which is mouse over, and then an empty function that I'm defining here. And we just want to remove the dot. So if I save that, this dot remove removes it from the, the DOM entirely. If I refresh and now I hover, it goes away. It goes away. And I'm not creating any new ones yet. If I open up the inspector and I turn on the elements here, let me see, and I select that, you can see it's just removing it from the from the DOM itself. So pretty cool. Let's keep moving. Now I want to scale that to zero. I want it to shrink. I want to animate it right before I actually remove it from the DOM. If I set the scale to zero though, and then call this right after, it's going to happen instantaneously. So I save and I refresh. We're still not going to get the animation that we want to see. It's just going right away. So let's wrap that in a set timeout as well. And this time for the amount of time, we're going to set that to our animation transition time constant, which we specified up here. And now if I save, come here and refresh, you'll see we get that nice little um, disappearing animation. Let's keep moving so that we start creating dots as well once we do that. Uh, so I add this create dot, and if I save, it's just gonna rerun that whole function again. So I hover and there's a new, new dot created, new dot created, new dot created, new dot created, and it'll happen, it'll just keep going, unlimited. Now I think a nice thing to add might be a little delay rather than creating the glitch right away is like, the user gets rid of it and then scrolls and then, oh, something appears. So we can define this new dot delay and it'll be a random integer between just one and three. So it'll be either one second or two seconds. Um, but just kind of a little bit of a jarring to like surprise the user. And then we'll wrap that in a set timeout and we'll say the new dot delay times a thousand because this needs to be in milliseconds. And we'll save that. Come in, oops, wrong one. Come in here and refresh. Let me get rid of this. Still loading. So now when I hover and I start scrolling, there's a bit of a delay between getting rid of them and them reappearing. So I think that adds kind of a fun effect to it. Something else you could look at if you want to know exactly how Webflow did this, you don't need my code, you can get their code. So let's go ahead and see exactly what Webflow is doing here. If I open Inspector, and they have a couple scripts down at the bottom here, Conference 22 random dots. This looks like they're calling this script here from JS Deliver. So I'm just going to get this code here and paste it into the browser. And you can see this is their code right here. Um, notice we're getting this min.js. Now let's just delete that and we can get something that's a bit more human readable. So now you can see exactly how they did it. They implemented it a bit differently than I did, but a lot of the same principles. They're using jQuery here. Uh, they have a lot more colors. They have a total dots tracker. So they'll, I noticed on their website, you'll get different amounts of dots at different times. So that's something to look into if you want to re-enable that. Um, but yeah, you can study their, their code as well. Anyways, that's it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Other than that, drop any questions or comments down below and I'll be happy to respond. All right, see you later. Yeah.